Unicorns, being legendary animals described since antiquity, are most well associated with grace and beauty, most commonly depicted with white, glowing fur, and most prominently a large single horn adorning their heads. While they are mythical, real-life examples akin to these mythical animals did indeed exist, and one of these examples was the bizarre genus known as Cydomotherium. The first remains of the genus were discovered during the Sino-Swedish scientific expedition to northwestern China in and around the Tibetan Plateau in the early 1930s, with two bovid cranial parts with odd-looking horn cores being collected from a Miocene deposit dating to around 7 to 5 million years old, discovered by Berger Bolin the chief paleontologist of the expedition being led by Sven Heiden, a Swedish geographer and explorer. The specimens were so peculiar that they were assigned to a new genus and species in 1935, being named Cytomotherium hedoni, the generic name referring to the basin in which the fossils were found, and the specific name referring to the person who they travelled with, being Heiden. The remains themselves were quite sparse, with only a skull being found that was quite partial, lacking the face and teeth, which are important for more specific identification, but based upon the horn core preserved, were assigned to being closest to musk oxen, therefore being a part of Bovidae as a whole, and Caprinae, which includes sheep and goats. It was not until nearly 70 years later that more remains of the genus were found, this time of a new species named T. brevirostrum, meaning short muzzle, which was thankfully more complete, allowing for more to be known about their biology and ecology. Two partial remains of two individuals were discovered in the Lynxia Basin in 2004, later being described in 2013. The first skull was partial, consisting of the cranial part of the skull, horn cores, and the occipital region around the back of the skull. The second skull is considered to belong to a female animal due to its morphology, which has a damaged horn core, but is notable in having a facial part of the skull, the first known for the genus, which is notably very short and high with a high nasal crest strongly retracted nasals as well as a shortened premaxillae. Both species are unusual in that while they do have two horns, they are of unequal sizes, with both species' horns being asymmetrical, with the right one in each being much larger than the left, giving them their unicorn-like appearance. In T. hedonii, the right horn core is tall and conical, in many ways resembling a Phrygian cap. In T. brevirostrum, the horn core is much shorter and flatter, as well as being squashed and flattened in comparison. The reasons for why this may be the case could be down to some form of sexual selection, in that perhaps the most outlandish or largest horns were more attractive to mates, as both males and females seem to have possessed them, but why only one horn is elongated still remains an interesting question. Furthermore, brevi rostrum also appears to have smaller frontal sinuses, with the nasal cavities as mentioned earlier being quite large suggesting that the living animals had broad, vaulted snouts like those of the Takin or Saiga. The enlarged nasal cavities in these animals is an adaptation for their high plateau environments, with their noses allowing them to in summer filter out dust and cool themselves down, and in winter heating up the frigid air before it is taken to the lungs, with both animals living in fairly cold environments. The basins in which they lived are suggested to be hot and semi-arid savanna environments, down to the remains of the basal horse Hipparion, although at the time of the late Miocene, the area was also undergoing uplift associated with the Himalayan orogeny, the growth of the mountain range, so it is likely that the inhabitants montane environments that had formed during the uplift. They are so far only known from the mountainous and hilly regions of northwest China, and so it is likely that their distribution, despite being known from few remains, might have been a long strip along the northern margin of the Tibetan Plateau, since the localities of the two species are almost 600 kilometres apart. Their dentition also supports this, with them having a mesodont dentition, most similar to that of modern deer, which supports a browsing diet of leaves and twiggy material, so their diet was likely a mix of long grasses, seeds, ferns and bamboo, similar to the takin of present day. All in all, I thank you for watching this video on these animals and that you may have learned something new. If you would like to see more from this channel, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And with that, I'll see you next time, whenever that may be.